Hey Divine Ones, it's Jerome Braggs, and I'm back again to try this one more time to have a live conversation with you about the relationship between people pleasing and disease. We tried this a few days ago and my phone died in the middle of it, so I didn't get to finish it. So I'm just going to start all over again and we're going to have this conversation um, from both the scientific perspective and the energetic perspective. So I'll be talking a lot today about um, the energy behind why the relationship, there's a relationship between people pleasing and disease, but also I'll be talking about the science that they found behind the relationship between people and disease. <clears throat> and I'm sharing this in hopes because if you are um, following me, the likelihood is you are some type of health challenge, some type of chronic illness or disease that you are trying to heal from, you would like to heal from. And what I've learned in my own journey of healing from disease is that we must begin to, if we're going to heal, it's not about what the food we're eating and the sleep we're getting, although those things can be beneficial and supportive. But the main root is where our body is in chronic stress and resolving that stress, and also where we are disconnected, disembodied, and out of alignment with the energy and the consciousness of our soul. That disease is not um, a punishment or a failure uh, like we've been taught. We've been very mistaught about what actually disease really is in the body. Um, and it's not an enemy that we must go to war against. Disease is a message. And it's a message about our relationship to um, ourselves, uh, not just our human self, but our soul self. And once we listen to that message, once we learn how to listen to the message and heed it, pay attention to it and make the changes it's asking us to make, we can heal. We can reverse our disease. That is possible. And one of the main things that I've been finding in my own journey that I had to learn from healing uh, and then I've been finding in my work with people all across the world, um, one of the things that is uh one of the things that is that kind of a root cause of why disease shows up for us is that we have a long held pattern of people pleasing. Um, and so we're going to talk about this today. And, you know, if you've been following me for a while or if you haven't been following me at all, I am a, the way I teach is to share things from my life, um, to share them as transparently and as vulnerably as I can so that you can see through me straight into your own life and get something from this for you and your healing journey. So having all that said, I wanted to give that out and give uh, a few of you with all time to get back in here for the reschedule. So let's dive right in, right? I've just given you kind of the, the, the definition of disease that we're going to be starting with, right? So disease, what, no matter what the disease, the diagnosis that you received, whether it's chronic or whether it's even, you know, quote unquote terminal or uh, something smaller than that. Um, we're we'll be talking about disease in the body, a health challenge that you're experiencing with the body, and how people pleasing is tied in with that. So, what people pleasing is is people pleasing is a behavior that we elicit, where we will try and meet the the needs or desires of other people, uh, try to support them, try to help them um, in some way. Now, that alone is not something that is detrimental to us. That is not something, quote unquote, negative to do, to actually be supportive of somebody else or to help them uh, meet their needs or their desires. That's not something by itself that is a problem. Where this becomes problematic and where it becomes people pleasing is, you know, we will say yes when we really want to say no. Right. We will say yes to things when we really don't want to do that or we really had planned to do something else instead and that's taking us away from where we really wanted to focus. We will take too much on, right? We'll uh, overexert ourselves. We have too much on our plate and uh, saying yes to this or helping this person or um, extending ourselves in this way adds stress to us, puts us in overwhelm and exhaustion. Uh, we will... Um, also, people pleasing is when you don't speak up for yourself, right? So if you disagree with something or you have a different belief system or you have something else that you'd like to say, but you think if you by saying this thing, this person would not like you or they would view you as not a good person or that you may lose belonging, you'll suppress, 
you'll suppress that. Instead of speaking your truth, you'll suppress it. You won't either speak up at all or you'll lie and try and say something to agree with them so that you keep the peace externally. But you're not at peace inside because that's not what you really wanted to say. That is not what you might even really believe. But you, again, you're doing this and people pleasing What's at the root cause of people pleasing, the behaviors of saying yes when we want to say no, taking too much on when um, that is more than we really need to be handling, uh, suppressing our authentic voice and our authentic truth uh, in order to keep the peace. The reason why we do this, the thing that comes behind people pleasing is we want to be liked and we want to not lose favor, approval, and belonging. So the reason why we people please, the reason why we do this, no matter what it is, no matter what the action is, the reason underneath it is I want to be liked. I do not want to lose approval of this person. I do not want to lose favor of this person. And I don't want to lose belonging, right? I don't want them to pull away from me or to abandon me in some type of way. And we usually pick this up uh, because we've had some type of traumatization or um, negative socialization in our childhood, right? So, you know, when we did speak our truth, somebody did step away from us. We lost a relationship or we got punished for it some type of way or um, we got ridiculed, right? So we weren't liked. We were teased instead. This often could happen. You know, you say something that you really enjoy. I like Transformers. Like, for example... Um, when I would say when I was a kid, I liked I liked My Little Ponies because I was very fascinated with horses. And one of the only toys that uh, when I was growing up that was centered around horses was My Little Ponies. But to tell a group of boys that I liked My Little Ponies um, meant that I was a sissy and they would call me a faggot and things like that. So I would suppress my desire for uh my Little Pony. So when people will be talking about it, I wouldn't speak up that I liked it, right? That's people pleasing, right? Uh, that's an example of it. Another example is of people pleasing is, um, and it, again, it's what it is, before I give you the examples again, what people pleasing is, is we are basically meeting the needs and desires of other people, showing up to meet the needs and desires of other people at the detriment of our own. Our own needs and desires are going neglected, right? So that looks like you're helping people achieve their dreams. You may be helping your partner achieve their dreams and their goals, but you have dreams and your go and goals, and you're not doing anything to to move your the needle forward on those, right? Um, you could be, um, you know, showing up to work on somebody else's house all the time. They say, "Hey, can you help me do this? I, I got some housework I need to do over here. Can you help me?" And you say, "Yes." But your house is in disarray and you really did not want your house to continue to be in disarray, but you keep showing up for that person. But your house is in disarray and it keeps going disarray because you're always saying yes to other people and not focusing and prioritizing on getting your own house together. Right. So the thing that makes people pleasing detrimental is that we are showing up for other people's needs while we're neglecting our own. So we are nourishing other people while neglecting ourselves. That is what is the detriment. And scientifically, here's what the def here's where it comes, where it is um, in relationship with the disease scientifically. So from people pleasing, remember the belief that is under people pleasing, why we people please is because we have a belief that if I'm my authentic self, right? If I, I say my authentic no, if I express how I authentically feel or what I authentically believe, or if I focus on myself and prioritize myself, people will not like me and they will um, move away from me or they will attack me some type of way, right? And so what that does is it sends a message to the subconscious. It subconsciously sends a message to the body that being myself is not safe here. And when we believe that we're not safe in the situation, especially safe to be ourselves, like our natural self is not safe, then it operates something in the body system called the fight or flight response. 
And when the fight or flight response gets activated in the body, and it only gets activated in the body when the body has uh, received a signal that we are under threat some type of way, that we're not safe and, and we are at threat, right? So in people pleasing, my truth and being myself is threatened, right? It's not safe. So what happens when the, that turns the fight or flight system on in the body and what happens when that turn gets turned on is the body floods um, the tissues with stress hormones, cortisol and, and adrenaline. Now, originally, the fight or flight response is supposed to help you uh, because we're in animal bodies. These are the human body is an animal body. And it has certain responses that are animal. And one of the responses is defense. And so this is the fight or flight response. It's a defense response of the body. And it's why it floods the body with the stress hormones of cortisol and adrenaline is because those bring more blood into the tissues. Uh, they help you constrict. Uh, and they either, either, they're either they to help you either run away fast from a threat or they're to, to fight a threat off, right? But it's supposed to be very short term. Right. So if we were still in living um, in the natural world and we encountered a tiger, for example, somewhere and uh, all of a sudden it's a threat to us and our body fight or flight response turns on. And so we can we either need a lot of blood in our tissues to run away fast. Now, the tiger is not going to chase you for three days. It's going to chase you probably for at max 10 minutes. It's either going to catch you or it's not. And after that 10 minutes, if it does not catch you. Then the fight or flight system, you relax and the fight or flight system gets turned off and your body goes back and the, and the um, stress hormones leave out of the blood and then out of the tissues. But the problem is when this behavior is chronic, right? So people pleasing, if it happens once, that's fine, right? But when you have a pattern of it, like this is how you usually show up in the world is people pleasing with your family, with people at your job, with your lovers, things like that. The system is chronically turned on. So the stress hormones in the body stay in the body. Now, why this is a problem is because when uh, cortisol come, is, stays in the body, cortisol suppresses the immune system. Cortisol suppresses the immune system. So... You can't fight off any kind of foreign entities coming into the body. And also, uh, while the body is flooded with stress hormones, the body's healing system is turned off. So the body cannot heal. So if you do, uh, so this is two things happening, right? So if you already have a disease and you're in um, chronic stress, this is what we call chronic stress. If you're in chronic stress, your body can't heal. Uh, the literally the healing mechanism of the body is shut off. The other thing is, while if you're not in disease, but this is a pattern that you have consistently, your immune system is going to be greatly suppressed for a long time. And your body cannot hold wellness when your immune system is greatly suppressed for a while. So this is scientifically where they found that there's a connection between people pleasing, somebody who has a chronic people pleasing pattern, uh, and disease because your immune system is chronically suppressed uh, and your body's healing system is turned off. And so your body is not going to be able to sustain wellness in that state. And so disease manifests. That's where the science has come in. I've done many, many, many studies where they kind of found this out connection between this. But what's happening is the reason why the fight or flight system gets turned on is because we have a belief that we are not, our authentic self is not safe in the world. And it's not safe to speak up our truth. It's not safe to say what we really mean to speak our truth. It's not safe to say no when we want to say no. And it's not safe to um, prioritize our own self. It also gets turned on again when you're saying yes to things, when your plate is really full and you really want to say no. That also stresses the body out. That puts the body in stress because you're putting too much on the system, right? So you may be exhausted, you may be tired, but you say yes anyway, right? That stresses the system out. And chronic stress is exactly what this is about, right? This is what's called chronic stress. When you're chronically stressed, you have the your body is flooded chronically with the stress hormones of adrenaline and cortisol. And that means your immune system is chronically suppressed. 
and your healing mechanism of the body is chronically shut off. So you can't be well in that state. Scientifically, it's just not possible. And this is another reason why, why I have an issue with many of the healing approaches and wellness approaches because they just teach you about what to eat. Now, there are many foods that can reduce the end. Um, also, by the way, I meant to tell you this right in this. When the stress, uh, cortisol and adrenaline um, flood the tissues, it inflames the tissues. So you're also in inflammation. So you have immunosuppression and you have inflammation happening at the same time while this system is turned on. And <clears throat> this is why I have an issue with many of the healing approaches and the wellness approaches, because what they're talking about and what they mainly focus on is food and diet. And they talk about, you know, just eat the green juice, become a vegan. And while those things can address, they can um, diminish the inflammation in the body. Uh, a lot, sometimes they can uh, reduce it drastically. Some foods and some ways of eating can definitely do this. Why well, I said they're very, they are supportive, but what they don't do is address the root cause of why you're stressed. They don't address the root cause of why you're inflamed. They don't uh, address the root cause of why your immune system is suppressed. So you're eating the green juice and all of that, but you're still holding these beliefs that it's not safe to be yourself. And so the fight or flight system in your body are not, um, it's not shut off. It's not shut off at all, right? And so this is the science behind it. Now, the energy behind it is this, right? So I, I teach both science and energy, by the way. I have degrees in both science and um, energy work. So the energy to understand around this, and this is what I understood after my own near-death experience that helped me um, heal myself. The energy behind this is when you are not, when we are in people-pleasing, what we're not doing is expressing the truth of our soul. We're actually suppressing it. So... The soul's energy has to flow through the body. This is why, if you're familiar with the chakra system, the chakra system is about letting the soul's energy flow from the spiritual, from the other side, if you will, the non-physical dimension, into the physical dimension. So your soul flows through the chakra system into the body. And this flow of your, of your soul into the body keeps the body healthy. When you are... Um, people pleasing, that means you're suppressing parts of yourself. You're suppressing the part of you that doesn't want to do that. That's You're suppressing your authentic desire to not do something. You're also neglecting what you really need and what you really want. So you don't ever, when you're in people pleasing pattern, the likelihood that you have a, a high and consistent feeling of being fulfilled uh, being very satisfied with your life, being very happy with your life is very small because you've been neglecting your needs, you've been neglecting your desires, and you've been neglecting to uh, express who you really are because you don't want to lose um, likability and belonging. And so what ends up happening there becomes a block in your chakra system. Your soul's energy doesn't come through you fully, right? And if the soul's energy isn't flowing through you, then the body it begins to become starved. It becomes starved of the energy of its essence, the essence of who you really are. And the body was literally created by your soul to be fueled by the essence of the soul. That's the fuel of the body. That's what the body runs on, even more than the food you eat. It runs off of that. You can think about it like a car. You know, so you think about your car and your car needs fuel to run, right? And when it gets lower and lower and lower and lower on that fuel, the car doesn't function as well. And if you can't continue to try and force it to function on really low fuel, it's going to start breaking down. Disease is the signal that your car is breaking down because your car being the body is breaking down because it's low on the fuel it needs. And you keep trying to run it on low fuel and you really need to charge up. And one of the ways we run low on fuel is people please. Right. When what we need to do instead is to fuel ourselves by speaking our truth, by prioritizing our own needs, by no longer neglecting our needs, but nourishing and fulfilling them and speaking up and saying no. 
and having our boundaries and also understanding that we can prioritize ourselves uh, and that when you prioritize yourself first, uh, that way you run off of a full energy cup instead of a diminished one. And you show up for others in a different way. Because here's another thing energetically what happens when you are people pleasing pattern. You were running off of a low uh, cup. So if you could think about a cup and it's, uh, and it's water being the energy of your soul. The water in the cup is the energy of your soul. When the cup is full, your body has full fuel. So your body is going to be healthy. It's going to work at its best. And you're actually going to have energy. You're going to be happy. But when that body, when that water, when that energy begins to come low, um, your body's going to be robbed of fuel. It's not going to function as well. You're not going to feel good. You're not going to be happy. And when we begin to show up to serve other people from this place, what ends up happening is we're showing up already diminished and um, you don't show up really wanting to be of service. Uh, and so there's an energetic imbalance already. People can feel that. Even if they don't understand it, they can feel that. And also you try, because you are starved of energy, you, start and pull, you try and pull energy from other people that you're in relationship from. That's another video which we'll talk about energy exchanges. But this is, a, this is another thing that happens, right? And so one of the things to do here is to if you want to heal you got to fill your energy cup up you really do you have to fill your cup up you have to increase the amount of your soul's energy flowing through you and the way you do that is to focus on what makes you happy what brings you joy the what what are the desires and the needs that you have and to speak your truth right and this is the thing that people pleasing, why people pleasing and disease go hand in hand, right? And if you want to heal, you have got to begin to um, release the pattern of people pleasing. Like I am no longer a people pleaser. Um, I do not care if people like my voice anymore or my, my message or my opinions. I don't care if um, people are upset if I say no to something or if I prioritize something that I wanted, I needed or wanted or needed to do first and I cannot involve myself in what they're asking me to do. I used to, I used to be a heavy, heavy, heavy people pleaser. This was one of my main behavior patterns uh, that I had to face and discover uh, in order to heal. I used to always say yes, even if it was at the detriment of myself. For example, um, dialysis, I went to dialysis three times a week, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And after one thing that dialysis does in the dialysis treatment, if you're not familiar with it, dialysis takes the blood out of the body. There's a machine that you get hooked up to and it takes the blood out of the body and it strips the blood of all the nutrients that are in the blood uh, and cleans it. And the reason why it strips it is because uh, when you're on dialysis, your kidneys aren't processing and functioning well. And the kidneys keep the certain uh, nutrients and certain uh, minerals in the body in balance. And when they get overbalanced, when the kidneys are no longer functioning well, they become overbalanced. And when they become overbalanced, you can have heart attacks. You can, uh, your bones can begin to dissolve and break, uh, especially with phosphorus and potassium. And so in order to pull these things out and to have them balanced, they kind of take the, the blood back to zero during the um, dialysis treatment. So they would clean the blood and take the blood nutrient level back to zero. Now, what this means is when they return the blood, there's no nutrients in the blood. So when they return the blood to the body after they've cleaned it, there's no nutrients in the blood and you are exhausted because of it. The body becomes highly, 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 highly exhausted. And um, people used to ask me a lot, what does it feel like? And um the way I would say it was if you've watched vampire movies, if you've ever seen a vampire movie, right? And you know, the vampire would uh, suck people's blood out. They bite them with the two teeth in the neck and they would suck their blood out. And oftentimes in the movies, once the person who was bitten in the neck and they had their blood sucked out, they would look like a ghost and they would look drained, right? That's what it feels like. That's exact. I, every time I see a vampire movie, I'm like, I know exactly what that person feels like. 
it feels like they look like the life was sucked out of them. That's what it feels like. It feels like the life has been sucked out of you because literally it had your life force, your blood has been sucked out for a while and returned. It's one of the reasons why they call uh, Dallas and Shishim's vampires. So, um, but you're very, very exhausted. And so I would be very exhausted after um, dialysis treatments, but um, for, for several years during this time, my mother would call me and she would be like, hey, can you go to my house and go do this? Or can you go, um, I, 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 oh my God, I have something I need to get done and I forgot to do it. Can you go do this for me? And it would be right after dialysis. And after dialysis, because I am so drained, what I needed to do was get eat something immediately and then go directly to sleep for several hours. And if I would eat something, go to sleep for several hours, my body could readjust and reassess the minerals and come back into balance. And I may have energy for the night. Right. But if I didn't do that, I was extremely exhausted um, beyond what I could really explain. The tired is almost like a death tired, like you would rather die almost to get that rest. Um and so, you know, that was the thing. If you know anybody on dialysis, they'll tell you, like, right after dialysis, you just need to eat and go straight to sleep. Your body doesn't have energy to do anything else, not even just sit and watch TV. And so she would call. And what I needed to do for my own well-being was to say, no, I can't do that. I'm going to, I need to eat and I need to go to bed. But guess what my people-pleasing self would do? He would say yes. And he would get up and he would go do that thing. And he would be, I would be so exhausted. There were times where I did it and I literally passed out. Like I literally, in the middle of whatever that was, I literally passed out, right? So here I am passing out, feigning, um, literally taking myself close to death because I didn't want my mother, who I care about, uh, to think I was a bad person by saying no. Right. Here I am needing to say no for my own survival. Like this wasn't even just about likability anymore. This is about survival for my body. Here I was needing to prioritize my own rest, say no for my own survival. But what I would do was my people pleasing pattern would make me say yes. Like I would be like, yes, because I didn't want her to think badly of me, uh, badly of me as a son. Right. And um, it took me a while but when I began, before I began to work on that people pleasing pattern and say, no, I'm not going to do that and have to be OK with her being upset if I said no or her being disappointed or her not viewing me the same in a likable manner. But I have my own well-being and that's a really key shift to um, understanding how to shift yourself out of people pleasing. Are you willing to lose other people's favor, of opportunities, or even money, if it means you'll gain your whole well-being? Are you willing to lose everything else if it means you'll gain all of yourself, right? So when I stopped people-pleasing, I no longer betrayed myself anymore. I stayed true to myself. I no longer felt, because here's the other thing with people-pleasing. When we people-please, oftentimes we're doing it to try to keep the peace externally. And you will do that. You'll keep the peace. Nobody's angry with you. Nobody's upset. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's criticizing you. But you lose the peace within you. You lose a sense of peace. You do not feel you feel like you're betraying yourself. You do not feel like you're doing what's best for you. You feel like you're being taken away out from what you really want to focus on. For example, the example I just used was I want to focus on rest. Um, I didn't get rest because I was always going here to to um, meet the needs and desires of my mom or my other parent. And so, but in order, could you have to get to a point where you were willing to lose that? At that point, I wasn't willing to lose that. I hadn't got to that point and I made a decision. I was willing to lose my mother's favor. I was willing to lose her approval and her likability of me if it meant that I would be well. I would gain myself and I would be at peace and that my body would be well, right? And that's what I got when I made that choice, when I made that shift. There was another thing that, um, and I'll take some of your questions here in just a second, but there was a um, another example of people pleasing that I wanted to share with you. 
So one of the ways people pleasing used to show up for me was that I would say yes when I really needed to say no. And another way that it would show up for me was I would never speak up and speak what I actually meant. I would never share that, right? And this happened for many years. This took me many, many years of my life. Um, I wouldn't share what I knew about the soul. I wouldn't share what I knew about healing. I wouldn't share and speak up in any of my thoughts around politics or my personal beliefs um, because I wanted to keep the peace and for fear that they would be too weird or that they would uh, rub people the other way and other people wouldn't like it or something like that, right? And um, one of the things for that is really will help you with your uh, people pleasing is to really look at where it came from. And again, people pleasing does two things. It puts the body in chronic stress. So when you are people pleasing, you have a people pleasing pattern, your body is under stress. It's guaranteed. You have a flood of cortisol and adrenaline in the body because you have a belief that being your true self and operating truly in the world and in alignment with who you truly are is not safe. And that sends a signal to the body that you are under threat. Your natural, true, authentic self is under threat. And so it operates the fight or flight response in the body and it floods the body with the stress hormones. And that's what chronic stress is, right? And we all know by now how chronic stress negatively affects health. The other thing about it is when you're people pleasing, uh, you're not being yourself, you're not expressing the fullness of your soul into the world, and you're not nourished, you're not getting your needs met, you're neglecting your needs, you're neglecting your desires. So your soul not only is not flowing through you, but it's not expanding. Like if you know about auras, if you can see people's auras, you know, you can see it, the energy outside of them. When people have a, a people pleasing pattern, their aura is very closely tight in closer to the body, right? Why that is, is because when we people pleasing, you're playing small, you're shrinking your soul, you're shrinking it instead of expanding it. What it's supposed to do is it's supposed to grow and expand. You're supposed to become more expressive of yourself, more honoring of yourself, more meeting your needs, right? So the soul's supposed to grow, but instead of growing, it shrinks. Let me people please, right? And think about like any living thing. Think about a plant, right? That is in a too small of a pot and it wants to grow out of that pot and it wants to expand. If it stays in that pot, when it's trying to grow and it's not allowed to grow and it's restricted, 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 it starts dying. This is the same thing with us. When we are people pleasing and playing small all the time, you start the dying process because your soul can not expand in this lifetime and it's here to expand. That's literally what the soul comes to do. It comes to express its true self and it comes to experience a life that feeds the, its true self so that it can grow and expand. The soul is supposed to grow. So when we're not growing um, and we're shrinking, we can't, the body starts to die, starts to become ill. So having said all that, um, I want to share with you one of the things that can help you is to realize where you got your people pleasing pattern from, like where it started from. So one of the things that I used to not do was speak up. I wouldn't share, um, you know, my viewpoints about what I had learned since my near-death experience. I wouldn't share about my near-death experience because my near-death experience was very different than what a lot of other people were talking about in spirituality. I wasn't talking, I didn't share what I learned um, about healing because it was very different from what the wellness and the healing community was telling. And again, people pleasing is I wanted to be liked. I didn't want to be ridiculed. I wanted to be, I wanted to belong. And so from that drive to be liked and to be and to belong, I knew that if I shared these things, these were very different and people were going to have a very different viewpoint of them and they weren't uh, going with the norm and I made me viewed as the weird one and I wouldn't belong right and this is the same thing with almost everything I have very almost all of my beliefs do not go with the norm almost all of my life my how I live my life doesn't go with the norm and so I wouldn't I would play small right I would be smaller than the bigness that I actually am and I look, and one of the ways it really came out was I would never speak. I would never, you know, if, if I was in a group and people were talking about a certain topic and I didn't agree with any of what they were saying, I would just stay quiet. I wouldn't say anything, right? Because I didn't want to rock the boat. 
and and I wanted to keep the peace. And so I w- I had to do this. I really tried to look at where did this come from for me? Like, where did this start? Where does this pattern come from? And I traced it back because almost everything, most of our patterns, not all of them, but most of our patterns usually come from something that happened to us in our childhood. And I had a huge aha moment around this. And it was that uh, mine came from my childhood. I was able to pinpoint it. And I looked all the way back. And where it came from was when I was growing up, um, my father was, um, politically, he was a Republican. And he used to listen to Rush Limbaugh and things like that. And so, oh, sorry about that. We just got an alert on our phones about a missing person here. Um, but I was talking about my father and I. So when I was younger, uh, my father, um, you know, was this was very differently politically aligned than, I, than the viewpoints that I had or that the rest of my family had. And he was very very outspoken about this. And um, what that meant was when we would be at family functions, you know, politics would come up and they would argue. And um, my father would always call me into the room and ask me to kind of defend him and be like, hey, you know, why don't you tell them what you, what you think about this? But my beliefs around that as a kid were very, very different. And he, and I had I was very educated on it because my father listened to all that stuff all day. So I heard this side of it. And then I would be hearing both sides. So I knew both sides. And I was very educated on where both sides were on all the issues. And I agreed with a little bit over here, but not on the social issues. And when it got to all of that, I would be called into the room. And from my childhood brain, I was thinking, if I say what I really believe here, it's going to be very different than what my father believes. And it may hurt his feelings. And I don't want to hurt his feelings publicly. And I also don't, he may be disappointed because I don't agree with him. And I didn't want to dis, 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 disappoint him. So what I began to do was I would just stay silent. So when I would get called into the room, they would ask me my opinion about something. I would just say, I don't have an opinion about that and stay silent. And I would do that because, and this is one of the most important things to us as children, it is one of our greatest desires and our needs as children is to be loved and belong to our parents. Because if we don't, if we're not loved and we don't belong to our parents, then that could be perceived by our brains as death because we need their security and we need their protection. So the desire to be liked and belong to the parents, no matter what's going on in the parent-child relationship, is very high. So my desire for my father to like me and for my father and for me to have belong to my father and have a good relationship was high. So what that meant was that anything that would threaten that, that I perceived would threaten that belonging and that connection with my father, I suppressed. And what I suppressed was my beliefs and what I actually thought. And what ends up happening though, is that becomes a pattern in our childhood that carries all the way over into our adulthood until we face it and heal it. And how that played out in my adulthood was I would never speak up about my real opinions in the world. Even, you know, I was, I was having visions and I was having, you know, getting channel downloads and I was, um, all the things I was learning about healing in the soul, I would never speak about it because um, I, from that childhood, instilled a deep belief in me that if I speak what I truly believe, I will lose the belonging and the love of the people I most want to be connected to. And that is where usually our people pleasing patterns begin. And in order to release that pattern, I had to really deal with that belief. I had to begin to believe that I could be myself and be different and speak up for what I truly believe in and still belong and still receive love. Uh, But until you do that work of shifting that around your consciousness, you're going to keep suppressing what you truly believe in You're going to suppress what you really want to say. 
You're going to suppress um, your no's, your real no's, your things that you really don't want to do. Not even if you just hate doing it, but just you may have some other thing that you want to do, right? You wanted to focus on, you've been dreaming about writing a book and you wanted to focus on writing a book today, but your sister calls and says, hey, can you help me do this? What you really wanted to do is say no, because you had planned for today to focus on the book. But your people-pleasing pattern will make you say yes, and then your book continues to go unwritten, right? It continues to go unfulfilled. Um, and that's what I'm talking about when you neglect your own needs and desires, uh, and you prioritize the needs and desires of other people because you don't want to cause um, conflict, and you want to be liked, and you want to belong. But that belonging always comes at a cost. The people-pleasing always comes at a cost, and the cost is your um, connection to the, your soul. Your soul shrinks instead of grows and your body becomes stressed so that it becomes chronically inflamed and immunosuppressed. And that is the connection between people pleasing and disease. So I have a few minutes here um, to answer some of your questions. So if you have any questions about this, um, please put them in the in the chat here and I'll respond to a few before we say adios to each other. So put them in there now. I think I saw one earlier. Many of you have joined since, so it's hard for me to scroll up and see. Are there certain, um, there's somebody asking, are there certain diseases that affect certain areas in body based on your thoughts? Um, there are, what I think you mean and I'm just, I'm assuming, because I'm not sure exactly from how it's worded, with, um, but I, what I'm feeling that you mean is, are there certain, um, are, are there things that affect certain areas of our body and show up in certain diseases? Yes. Um, it's not always the case that this disease is about this particular thing, but, um, you know, if you know a lot about the chakra system or if you study the chakra system, you can figure a lot of that out. But even more important than that, your specific disease is a message to you and it has a specific message about you and where you are and what, need, what needs to shift in you. And I am more interested um, and more focused on helping you become aware of what your particular health situation's message is for you. Like there's not just um, the kidneys are a message always about this. It doesn't always happen like that, right? So... Um, I know one of my one of my mentors was Louise Hay, and she would often say that's the case. But that's actually what I found uh, after my near death experiences. That's actually not the case always. There are some similarities, but it actually is very uniquely designed for you and the issues that you are holding and how you are um, shrinking your soul and how you are being stressed. So uh, my interest is mainly helping you find out what are all of those because you can focus on the general stuff and you can miss the other more um, specialized messages and you uh, will just focus on trying to clear the general stuff and you will, won't get to the root of why it manifested for you, right? So for example, um, a lot of uh, venereal diseases are about shame, right? So that's the general thing like HIV, herpes, things like that. Um, but where is that shame showing up, right? Some of it is sexual shame. Some of it is shame around um, how you look. Some of it could be shame around uh, certain personality characteristics you have, but it's unique to you, right? How that shame is showing up, and that's what I'm talking about. So, um, but yes, it does. Um, and also a lot of the illnesses that show up are directly uh, connected to what chakra system they're in. Like, for example, if you have um, things with the thyroid, right? The thyroid is in the throat chakra area. And so a lot of that is going to be around you're not speaking your truth. You're suppressing it some type of way. Um, you're not expressing what you really feel. You're not having hard conversations with people. You're not speaking up around boundaries. Like, all of that type of stuff can be happening. Um, but it's also about exhaustion and how much you're taking on. And you're not, uh, it's also tied into you not saying no to things. That's why you're exhausted. But um, you're exhausted. You're taking too much on. Um, you're overexerting yourself. 
So again, yes, but there's also other things that are specific. And I, my work is specifically around helping you get the unique message that your illness came to share to you so that you can make the changes it's asking you to make uh, to come back home to your soul and to the well-being you really want. Um, anyone else? I don't see any more questions here. You got 30 seconds to get your question in before we end today. <laughs> Thank you for your question, by the way. And if you want to learn more about the general stuff, um, a really good resource for you uh, to look at is um, Louise Hayes' book. Uh, I think it's called You Can Heal Yourself. And she has a small book that lists all kind of diseases and illnesses and what the thought and energetic patterns that are associated to it. Um, that's the more general look at it. I would highly recommend looking into her work. Um, does this apply to a condition like knee osteoarthritis, not a chakra? Actually, there are chakras there. Uh, they're uh, not, you're not taught about, you're usually taught about the main seven with the root going down, but there are chakras down in the legs and in the roots. Um, the legs oftentimes are about the general thing. The knee is about your flexibility. How flexible are you? Are you trying to control things? Are you trying to have your life go one way? You're not open to the flow. Uh, and also the legs are about your movement through your life, which also ties right into that. Like, how are you moving through your life? Are you trying to control everything? Are you moving with fear? Are you moving with restriction? Um, but even more than that, uh, what I would say was, uh, and you can look on my YouTube videos. I have uh, many YouTube videos on this. So you can type my name in and look at uh, the message behind disease. You can get this, but you can ask, tune into your uh, experience with this and ask yourself, how does it emotionally make you feel? How does having knee osteoarthritis make you feel? What is it? What is the experience of it? Emotionally make you feel like, not physically, right? We know this pain and, and all of that. But emotionally, what does it make you feel like? Like, for example, uh, uh, kidney failure made me feel a few things. One of the things was it made me feel like a failure. Um, it made me feel like um, exhausted and drained. It made me feel very restricted. And those emotions um, I had been carrying for many, for many years before the disease showed up for me. I had been feeling restricted because I was never living the life I really wanted to live. And I wasn't expressing my true self. I felt very in prison and in bondage because I felt like being myself wasn't safe. And being myself, all of the aspects of myself, my sexuality, my spiritual gifts, all of that, um, I was suppressing a lot of that. And so I felt very restricted. Uh, and I felt like a failure at that time because I wasn't um, living the life I really wanted. I had dreams that, that I wanted to start going uh, in the direction of achieving after college. And I wasn't doing that. I was just working a regular nine to five. And I felt like a failure to, to myself. Um, and so this is your, the disease is an outer reflection. It is a manifestation and an outer reflection of the energy you're holding in your body as well. So how you're feeling is an outer reflection. It has to be, the body has to reflect. It, it always has to reflect the chronic vibrations that you were holding. And the, the disease is going to tell you, it's going to literally tell you what the vibrations are. If you do this exercise that I just gave you, looking at how does it make you feel, and then look at where else you've been feeling like that in your life, you begin to see the root cause of where the illness is, why, why the illness is manifesting, right? So even if you don't know anything about chakras or anything, you don't have to know any of that. Just do this exercise and you'll say, oh, I've been feeling, like for me, I've been feeling restricted. I was feeling like a failure. I was feeling exhausted for a long time. And that is not the same energy of well-being. That is not the energy of my soul. Um, and this is why this is manifested. Now, the key to healing is you have to shift. You have to become the opposite of that energy, right? But that's it. And, and I see another question. Um, what issues do you see connected to Lyme disease? Again, 
um, I want you to do this exercise for yourself. Like, I don't want you to, one of the things I'm very interested in is like, I, I teach you how to heal yourself. I'm not here to heal you myself. I'm here to help you learn how to heal yourself. And one of the things we do with this type of like, what do you see? And I understand you're trying to get help. So I'm not, this is not a diminishment at all, but I just want to get a deeper understand. I'm wanting you all to go deeper into the understanding so you can really heal. When we do things like, um, what do you see behind this? What do you see behind this? What you're actually doing is you're give, trying to give somebody your power. Like you see this for me and you tell me what to do. That's what's underneath that, even if you're not aware of it. And I am more about how can I see? How can I see? How can, can you tell me how to see what this message is for me? Right. And I just gave you that um, exercise to do. So with Lyme disease, tune into it. Like literally after this live, which I'm about to end here, put your hand on your heart, close your eyes, take in a deep breath and say to yourself, how does my experience with Lyme disease make me feel? How does it make me feel? And get honest, you may have to do this a few times. It may not all come up to you all just right in that one sitting. You may have to do it a few times. I definitely did it a few times for me. But if you do it enough times, you'll get very clear. How does it make me feel? And write the feelings down on a piece of paper and look at them. And then one by one say, how long, how long back does this go for me? How, where else have I been feeling like this? And you begin to get a picture of why this manifested. Like, oh, I've been feeling this way for a long time. Or, oh, I've been feeling like this in this area, in this area. Then the next step to the healing is how can I shift from that feeling to its complete opposite? So for me, I told you I felt like a failure. How can I shift to feeling like a success? I told you I felt exhausted. How can I shift into feeling chronically rested? I told you I felt um, like it was failure, exhaustion, and restricted. I felt restricted. How can I feel liberated and free? What do I need to do to chronically, not just feel it a little bit, but that is my new way that I feel. I feel now liberated. I feel successful and I feel rested and vibrant, right? So what do I need to do to change in my thought process and the choices that I'm making and then the way I live my life? So having said all of that, I'll be doing a lot more lives. We got a lot more topics to, to dive into that will help you. Uh, and I'll be doing some Q&As, just simply Q&As coming up as well. But thank you. I hope this has shed some light on your understanding of the connection between people pleasing and disease. It's understandable why you have the pattern. It's not something that you need to beat yourself up for why it shows up. It's not something that you need to judge yourself for why you have it. It's understandable. Something happened to you that led you to believe that if you if you pleased yourself first, right? If you prioritize yourself, if you spoke up authentically, if you lived your authentic life, you would it wouldn't be safe and you would lose. And from your child brain, that loss and that unsafety gets translated into you would die. So you want to survive, you, especially your child self wants to live. And so it's understandable why you would adopt a behavior pattern uh, to try and, and live and survive with the understanding that you have. But now you're an adult now, you're in different situations. Um, you can live your truth and be safe. You can foster belonging and love and connections based upon your authentic self instead of you being somebody that is suppressed and small. You can be the big version of, of yourself in this life and be safe and be loved. And that is what you need to work on believing and then work on living from in order to release this pattern. Thank you all so much for joining. I just have two more things for you. One, don't forget what I told you apply it. And two, now that you know what loving yourself looks like a little more, go love yourself. Much love. Bye.